Danny Flexant here four seconds out with unbeaten middleweight Danny Dignam. Danny, how are you getting on in isolation? Oh, I'm bored. It's killing me. I'm bored to death. Uh, I've been training. That. I've been doing. Like, I've been training every morning, but it's only for an hour a day or an hour and a half at, at the most. And then for the rest of the day, I'm just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Don't know what to do. Have you got like facilities at home and stuff? You got a bag? Yeah, well, I, I put a bag up in the shed, and I've got some weights in that there as well. So I've been doing my bag work, a little bit of strength work, and and the odd run here and there. Mainly bag work though. And you, what's your living situation? Have you got a missus? Have you got kids? Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got a missus and that. I ain't got no kids yet. <laughs> uh, I live with my girlfriend. We've just bought a bought a house now together. Like I'm sitting in it now. I want to crack on with this. Like give me a second to do, but all the tips are closed and there's nothing I can really do at the minute. So uh, I'm just trying to keep myself busy. Well, at least you get to spend a bit more time together. Once boxing's back on, you'll hardly see her. Uh, yeah, I think I've been in her company a bit too much. <laughs> she probably feels the same if it's any consolation. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Keep getting under each other's feet of that. Yeah, I can imagine. You must be missing yeah. the boxing as well. You were on a great little run of form before this happened. Yeah, I was, yeah. I mean, I, I miss it bad. I'm on Lee Eaton's case all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he don't even message me back now. So if you're watching Lee, message me back. Come on, let us know what's happening. Well, he no, loves he, it, doesn't um, he, that he's managing all these fighters, but now the shutdown's on, he probably hates it. Uh, probably, he's probably getting 50 messages a day. Exactly. Like, he has messaged me back. He's just saying, like, we need, we don't know what, like, the head office don't know what's happening yet because of the corona and all that. And, you know, if they're going to put shows on behind closed doors, he basically said he's just waiting for the, the head office to, um, to find out what's going on. So, um, How do you feel about that fighting behind closed doors? Because obviously you're a good ticket seller. I'd love it. Would you? <laughs> oh, I'd love it. That'd be my f- most f- best thing to do. Because I don't get nervous in a fight for who I'm, who I'm fighting. Like, I could be fighting anyone. But I don't get nervous for who I'm fighting because at the end of the day, I'm going to go in there and give it my best. The reason I get so nervous is because all my family's there, my friends are there, there my sponsors. And, you know, these... I don't want to, it's like, I, I don't want to let anyone down, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not for me, but I feel like it's for everyone else. I don't want to let people down and that's why I get so nervous. Well, I don't get like so nervous, but that's, that's mostly the pressure that I feel because of everyone's there that I know. Well, it's nice to see a boxer who actually welcomes the chance to box behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, I would love it. I'd love it. If, if I could just fight in front of the ref and the judges, I'd. That I probably boxed my best then. How have you enjoyed the last year or so? Because you've progressed now to a headliner on relatively big shows. You um, stopped Alfredo Melli last time out, Comrade Cummins before that. You're mixing good company and, and really excelling. Yeah, I mean, I've loved it. I mean, MTK has given me all the opportunities and um, I've grasped them. You know what I mean? I've, I've trained hard, I've dieted right out. I've done everything I've should have done. Like I've I've not put one foot out of place, and the results show. I mean, Comrade Cummins and Alfredo Melli, they're good fighters, like very good fighters, and um, it just shows. I feel like I'm at a good level. You know what I mean? I I got them both out there um, early, not early, but I, I stopped on both and that, and um, just thinks it puts me in good stead for like the future. You know what I mean? So. Um, Sorry, but yeah, I'm looking forward to to what's next, to be honest with you. you got the WBO European belt, which obviously gives you a WBO ranking. Looking at who else yeah. is in those rankings, you've got Luke Keeler, and obviously with MTK involvement, that wouldn't be too difficult a fight to make, presumably. No, I mean, Luke Keeler's a very good fighter. Another Irishman as well. <laughs> All the Irish boys are out to get me, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes sense that fight. I, 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 I would, I would like that fight to be honest with you. Um, I don't know, I don't know what uh, Luke Keeler's plans are next. I mean, obviously he lost to the Demetrius Andre, who's like who's quality, and he. But I don't know if Luke Keeler wants to see the thing with Luke Keeler because he just booked for a world title. It might be a bit sticky fighting me, if you know what I mean. See, he's in a good position. He could get another like decent win 
then he could get probably another good money fight. You know what I mean? But by him fighting me, it, it might be a bit sticky for him. And then where does he go from there? So what I think they'll probably do with him is probably get him a, a decent win. Get, get him another like world title shot or along that sort of lines. And then I don't know what's, what, what, what would be next for him. But I would like that fight. So then what's the plan for you? Is it is it certain titles or certain people you want to beat to get to that next level, move up the rankings a bit more? I don't know. I mean, I let my team deal with it because so far they've done a very good job. So I've got full belief in them. So I don't really... I, in my head, I've not really think, thought about I want to fight this person, that person, whatever, or for this belt, whatever. I know that my team will deliver for me. So... I'll leave it to them and see what they come up with. Must be hard to match you sometimes, though. You know, tall, rangy southpaw with a dig. It's yeah. like everyone's worst nightmare. Yeah, I mean, not everyone likes a southpaw, do they? <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose it. I suppose it'd be difficult matching me. But then, on the other hand, I've got I've got the WBO title that will give you a, a world ranking. So yeah, there might be boys like wanting to fight me which there probably is it's probably a, there's probably a, a long line of boys out there want to fight me because they know a win over me would get him in a good position so I'm not sure what's your dream fight like where would it be who would it be against what would it be for uh, I re- I've not thought about that I've is never there, thought is about there anywhere you'd really like to fight uh I like I like the Brentwood Centre. It's close to home. Like, <laughs> uh, obviously, I'd, I'd love to fight in America one day or something like that, or um, just a bigger, bigger, like a big arena, like headlining the old two or something like that. That'd be a dream, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Before I let you go, saying I should ask you as well, what's going on with your brother? Are we going to see him in the ring anytime soon? No, nah, nah, no, never. Uh-huh. He ain't boxed now since 2014. Um, he's got a young family he's married he's busy with work he ain't got I mean, no intention of coming back uh, he, I mean he's there for me yeah, every fight and he's always behind me and backing me but as far as like he, himself coming back nah I don't think so so you've got it's a shame carry the family quality. name there yeah 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 I suppose I have yeah it is a shame though because he was a quality fighter like he was good but um He's happy, he's working, he's got a young family, he's in a good position, so, yeah. And I interviewed um, John Hedges recently, and he had a lot of nice oh, yeah, things yeah. to say about you. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Just a quick comment on him and his talent, because he's obviously still only 18. Yeah, oh, he's quality. He's a good kid, he's young, he's young and he's still got a lot of maturing to do, but um, with the right guidance, you know, that they're, they're not going to just chuck him in there straight away with, like, a higher opponent sort of thing. They're going to give him learning fights and he will learn from them because these journeymen are others now. And um, he'll mature along the way sort of thing. Like, when you look at him, he's still like, he still looks like a young boy sort of thing, but he's only young. So with each fight and that, he'll improve. he gets stronger, he'll get more, he'll, he'll adapt to it more. But no, he, he's got a bright, bright future, young John. So, um, I look forward to seeing where he's going to go. And talking to people with bright futures, for, for anyone out there who wants to follow your future a bit more closely, how can they find you on all the different social media platforms? Um, I'm on I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter and that, but I don't really use it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm like, I just keep myself to myself. I'm not someone who wants to lie and lie or anything like that. Every now and then I put a, like a boxing without a photo on there and that, but I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. So, yeah, just search Danny Dignan. But the best way is just buy tickets, basically. Yeah, come and watch me fight. Yeah. So, yeah. Wicked. All right, well, I really appreciate your time. No, yeah. thanks, Dan. Can't wait to see you back in the ring. Right, thanks, mate. Thank you for your time. All right, take care. Stay safe. See you later.